Hi, I'm Mitch and welcome to my sharpening bench where today I'm going to show you how to sharpen a plain iron. This is the way I've been doing it for years and it works really well for me. And of course, to get maximum enjoyment out of your woodworking, you do need to know how to keep your cutting tools nice and sharp. Now let's start by defining what a sharp edge is. Now an edge itself is where one surface intersects with a surface, another surface at an angle to it. The smaller the radius of that intersection, the sharper it is. And obviously for the sharpest edge, you don't want to have any radius at all. It wants to be infinitely small. Looking at a plain iron, one surface is the back, the other surface is the bevel. One thing you'll notice when you get a, a replacement iron, or you look at your iron and perhaps it hasn't been properly tuned, is you'll find grinding marks on the back. Where those grinding marks come right the way to the edge, that actually means you end up with something like a bread knife surface, a serrated edge. Now, in some planes, uh, a toothing iron is uh, very useful, and that's exactly what they've done. They've actually scored grooves in the back of the iron, and it makes multiple cutting points across there, and that can be very useful in wood that tears out easily, and for quickly hogging away lots of material. But that's another subject. Now to sharpen, you're going to need an abrasive of some sort. Here are four commonly used ones. We've got sandpapers that are used on flat um, surfaces like this float glass. That's often called the scary sharp method. I've got diamond stones here uh, for which I use a lapping fluid. Oil stones, more traditional, um, used with oil. And uh, water stones used, unsurprisingly, with water. My preference for diamond stones comes down mainly to convenience. Um, they're very easy to clean up, just using an eraser, rubber eraser, gets off all the old steel that's been left behind from the blades. The uh, fluid you use with them, lapping fluid, you don't use very much, so if you're um, traveling around, you can just take a very small bottle of it with you. They remain flat in use, so there's no flattening that's required, which is something you definitely need to do with water stones and also with oil stones. If you look around at diamond systems on the market, you'll find medium price ones like this, uh, higher price ones which guarantee a better flatness, and you'll also find some very cheap ones like these. Now these cheaper ones generally are on a thin plastic backing, which is flexible, so that's not much good if we need to keep it flat. Um, and also the glue I, I find does tend to give out after not too long and use with water. In my experience, the best polished blades come off a leather strop with honing compound on it. I clean the strop off every so often using the edge of a scraper blade and then recharge from the wax block. If you go down the water stone route, you will find that the very super fine stones will give you just as good a polish, perhaps even very fractionally better than uh, using a strop. The first thing to tackle with a plain iron is to make sure that the back of the iron along the edge is nice and polished. Now traditionally you'd polish or flatten out and polish the whole of the back, uh, it's not necessary. As long as you can polish this last uh, millimetre or so, then uh, that will be absolutely fine. Finishing on the fine stone, going from side to side with the blade like this, make sure that the very fine marks that we leave are going to be running off the edge, rather than producing perhaps a, an edge that could be quite delicate. Now hopefully you can see we've got a fairly polished area all around the middle here and out to each tip and it's holding back about three or four mil at the edges. There's a little bit here that's obviously dished because we can still see the original grinding marks but right along the cutting edge is going to be nicely polished which is what we want. Now I'll just move over to the strop so placing down lots of pressure towards the tip and pulling backwards, keeping it flat. I 
A really simple shop made jig allows me to set the Eclipse style guide at the right distance back from the edge of the blade to get the angle I want. Using a jig like this and a guide means you can have exactly the same bevel angle every time. Now I know I've got a lot of work to do on this blade so I've come over to the coarser stone and we're simply going to run backwards and forwards with finger pressure down at the front of the blade and on diamond stones you're not supposed to use too much pressure so more strokes, less pressure it preserves the sharpness of the diamonds and it removes the material nice and quickly. Now hopefully you can see that we're almost all the way there. There's probably half a mil, possibly a mil at the edges left to go. But I'm going to be using this on hardwood. And for hardwood you want a slightly steeper bevel. So we start by putting a 25 degree bevel on and then we put a secondary bevel a little bit steeper. And since we're going a little bit steeper we need not take that right the way to the edge at 25. We can stop now, reset the guide to give me a slightly steeper angle, around about 30, 32 degrees, and then work until we get the burr on the back. So now I'm working towards a 30 degree bevel. Now that I can feel a slight burr right the way along the edge, I could move on to my finer stone to polish that edge. However, in most of my bench planes, I like to have a slight camber to the end of the blade. So what I'm going to do is just take a few more strokes on here. And if I want a very tiny camber, then I can just press hard on both edges of the arm whilst I'm working it backwards and forwards like so. If I want it slightly more pronounced, then I'll work, first of all, pressing on one side for a few strokes, then on the other, and then I'll go hard on one side and transfer the pressure across to the other side as I'm moving across the stone. So now at this point I can move over to the fine stone. If I do that I'm going to be polishing the whole of that secondary bevel, uh, which is absolutely fine. But if I just want to ease up slightly on the guide, I can just polish the very tip and that will go a lot faster. And here all we want to do is replicate uh, what we, the last steps we did on that side. So really it's pressure on one side, pulling back, changing over to the other side, repeating. And it really is just a few strokes like that. That's going to give you a very tiny micro bevel right on the end. Probably won't be able to see it without a magnifying glass. And you've still got the burr on the back, so we need to get rid of that. Again, on the fine stone, I'll take the guide off here. Shouldn't need that anymore. To take the burr off, we'll place the back of the iron onto the fine stone. Gradually lower down the tip and push it away, raise it up again, cross the stone, down, push away. I can see the reflection changing on the edge here, so it's, it's turned the, the burr over to the other side, to clean off any fluid, come over to the strop. The strop will polish that micro bevel and it will also remove the burr. And you should hopefully see the burr disappear. We want the same sort of angle, maybe start a little bit shallower, pull back, gradually raise the back up a little bit. Remembering it's curved blade, so we need to put a bit of extra pressure on the edges to make sure they're properly polished. Uh, then we'll turn it over, lay it flat on the strop. 
and pull that back a couple of times. You shouldn't be able to feel the burr on either side now. Now to really polish that back edge, you can put it on the strop. Don't do this with the chisel by the way. And just holding the back up very slightly and pressing down in the middle so the, the end is slightly raised but not too much. Pull that back. That puts a lot of pressure right at the end of the blade. Virtually flat with the back. And just give you a lovely polish right on the edge. So I hope that's given you enough information to have a go at sharpening your plane iron and get a good result. Uh, practice will make things better and there's more information on my website. So until next time, cheerio!